joins us now is Sasha Lohmann, America expert at the German Institute for International Security Affairs. Welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Is this the start of a de-escalation in the Gulf? Well, I feel no. These processes are hardly controllable and it's a huge potential for misperception. So steps on both sides are perceived to be offensive, even if they're essentially meant to be defensive. Do you think it's, it's reassuring Tehran, nonetheless, that Pompeo has been out there talking to people, talking to Russia, talking to the EU? Well, I think it's kind of reassuring that he's so far unsuccessful, uh, unsuccessful to garner support for the so-called maximum pressure strategy. But at the same time, um, the U.S. is deploying new military assets in the region. And I think that's highly um, unstabilizing for also the Iranian leadership. What do you think about this uh, shuttle diplomacy on, on Pompeo's behalf? Is it a one-off effort or, or do you think America will be keeping up the pressure for this maximum pressure strategy that, that you just mentioned? Well, basically, Pompeo is trying to garner some legitimacy from allies in Europe, but also from partners of the remaining uh, parties uh, among the JCPOA. But he must not be successful necessarily because the U.S. can and has snapped back sanctions unilaterally and they are pressuring Tehran regardless of what the others do. And their efforts at trying to save the deal so far have also been proven not successful at all. Okay, well, the administration in Washington believes that the sanctions will strengthen the opposition, undermine the regime of the mullahs. Uh, could they, though, wind up strengthening the hardliners in Iran? Sure. I mean, those are the, the two theories, and it looks like as the, the second theory um, that it's strengthening the hardliners, the so-called rally round the flag theory, is actually what's happening on the ground in Tehran. Okay, as part of that rally around the flag theory in Tehran, we've seen a deployment of, of Iranian assets in the Gulf as well, including the, um, the elite units of the Republican Guard. What are the Iranians doing uh, for their side now to, to strengthen their position in the Gulf militarily? Well, they're trying to put some pressure on the U.S. at the same time because they cannot match up militarily on the scale with the U.S. Navy in the Persian Gulf. So what they're doing is that they are trying to somehow retaliate uh, asymmetrically and that's why they're deploying some assets, so-called proxies, in the region. And this also heightens the potential for escalation because of the proximity between U.S. forces in Syria and um, in Iraq and these Iranian-backed forces. And just this morning, we, we have reports coming in from Iran that Iran has indicated the country has already stopped some of its commitments under the nuclear deal. What impact do you think that could have? Well, those are fairly small steps, and they are also only pertaining to these areas that the U.S. reimposed sanctions on. Um, so these are actually steps which indicate that the Iranian leadership is still interested in maintaining the deal. And we will see after the so-called ultimatum to the Europeans, the 60 days, um, what they will do afterwards, because it's not really likely that the Europeans can actually deliver um, economic benefits to Iran because U.S. sanctions um, are prohibiting European companies, even in Europe, to follow EU law. And with the economic threats and pressures increasing and with the military threats and pressures increasing as well, what needs to be done right now to cool the situation off to get an effective de-escalation? Well, as I said, these processes are hardly controllable and what needs to be done is uh, there needs to be an actor that might be able to de-escalate the situation. But in this kind of environment, it's really hard to actually send signals of de-escalation because the potential for misperception is so huge. So I think this is kind of what's really dangerous about this whole situation, that there's hardly a kind of space for, for de-escalation. Okay, briefly, if you could, who should be the interlocutor you just mentioned? Could it be the Europeans? Well, preferably the Europeans, but so far they're really cautious in kind of... Um, getting the United States to really accept that they want to maintain the deal and kind of put some, put some money where their mouth is. Sasha Lohmann, America expert at the German Institute for International Security Affairs. Thanks for coming in this morning. Thanks.